Players Forum is your source for informative basketball talk about mentorship, education, and community. The ball is in your court. This is your Players Forum. What up, world? It's Coach Mike. And it's Agent T. And we'll now, we'll now, I can't even talk tonight. We're now tuned in to episode four of the Players Forum. What's up, you guys? How are you, Agent T? I'm good. <laughs> good. <laughs> I almost said something else. <laughs> I'm good, Coach Mike. That's right. So what's going on? Yes, I yes. have Coach Eric Perry here to uh, chop it up with us tonight mm-hmm. about work ethic and his training and his history. Yes. Why don't you give the listeners and uh, viewers a little background story on how you guys actually met? Uh, me and Coach, we met uh, four or five years ago. Um we were both at the same event. Um, we were working the same event, actually. It was a combine. So uh, Eric and I met uh, coaching and doing measurements and all the testing and stuff like that and just kind of grew a bond, man. And, um, man, he was just a good brother, great spirit. We chopped it up, very knowledgeable of the game. He spoke well, just an intelligent dude. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for me, I just get attracted to that, you know. <laughs> and we were able to just bounce things off each other's brains and talk about the game, and he knew so much about the game. and That was just enough for me, so we always stayed in touch. Um, I found out later, you know, who he was connecting to and who was mentoring him and, and all of the things that um, he had going on in and, and, and his life, and mm-hmm. I just thought it was amazing, so. Uh, where coach is now he's a director of basketball operations for um, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo Mm -hmm. and um, he invited us to a game yeah they've been checked them out this year and they look pretty good so man they just got a great dude over there on their staff man and he came to our program one year and spoke to our guys blessed Uh, us with his presence at at, at a pro club practice Mm -hmm. you know so very knowledgeable brother very excited I'm uh, very excited for you guys to hear uh, his point of view on training, who he was under as Mm -hmm. far as the training aspect. I think he was under a really, really, really good brother Mm -hmm. that, uh, that, man, he knows the game. And just, you know, just giving out the right advice to to these, to this generation, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's what's most important to me is good information. Well, I think we big up to him enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I think you appreciate this, you know, introduction. Yeah. So uh, why don't you go ahead and get the, give him the formal introduction. <laughs> okay. Well, um, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited and it's a pleasure to introduce basketball director of operations, Mr. Eric Perry. It's Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How are you, brother? I'm good, man. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. It's a, it's a must, you know, that we do this, man, because I know you got so much game, so much knowledge to give. So I want to just jump right into it, brother. I want to jump right into it. I want you to give us a background on, on, on you, on your story and, and your coaching days and your playing days. Yeah, so um, I went to high school in Southern California and went to a Norco High School um, over in the IE, uh, in the Empire. Um, I didn't play. I didn't play in high school, man. I, I was tall, but I wasn't good. But I thought I was good. Um, <laughs> you know, my teammate was my trainer because, you know, my parents couldn't afford it. It wasn't something that, you know, what we do now, like we look for trainers. We didn't have them back then. So my teammate was my trainer. Uh, we worked hard every single day, every single day. And um, I got an opportunity to go play at a NCCAA Division II school in Rochester, Minnesota, wow. called Crossroads College. Okay. You know, I, I went there, played four years of basketball, did two years of soccer. And through my time playing, you know, most kids, you work, you grind because you what? You want to be a starter. You want to be that guy. Right. I love my I love my six man role. I loved it. Coach, well, yo, e, I'm gonna start you tonight. Nah, coach, I'm gonna come off the bench. That's just who I was. That's just how I wanted to do things. And so after my four years of playing, I became a head coach at the age of 24. Whoa, wow! Youngest head youngest head coach ever in school history. First black coach ever in school history. Right on. I, it was it was a blessing, man. I learned a lot about myself. Mm-hmm. And as you know, man, I thought I knew everything. I'm like, I got the job. I'm going to have it. Blah, blah. I'm going to have it how I want it. 
But uh, that that job, once after one year of being the head coach, and they let me go, my my life took a took a turn for the better. Um, from there, man, I went back to my high school, became an assistant varsity coach. Okay. After that, man, I I got my first. I'm gonna tell you this, Mike, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest if I can. Absolutely. Um, I had to hustle. I had to grind. Like I'm working part time jobs. Um, I used to work with the Bakersfield Jam. Back then, they were the D League team, mm-hmm. and they used to have tryouts. And so with them tryouts, I would drive all the way from Southern California, the Inland Empire. That's about a four hour drive yeah. all the way to Bakersfield just to help them out with their with their tryouts. And for me, man, I'm, I'm all about networking. So there was a guy there. Um, I'm going to give a name shout out to Justin Jackson. He was working with the Bakersfield Jam. Shout I met Justin. him. And I met him. And I'm like, hey, man, I, I want to connect with you any way I can. I'm not asking you for a job. I just want to network with you, whatever that entails. And that's how I ran into now my mentor, Chris Johnson, which is through Justin Jackson. Wow. We, we, we can get into that a little later, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, Chris Johnson, man. Chris Johnson hoops. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Wow, okay. Well, as far as your networking and your hustle, man, a lot of that um, I can relate to as well, man. Definitely mm-hmm. the, the, the part-time thing. Um, I mean, even between my seasons when I played back in the day, I was working security, man. A lot of people <laughs> may know that, may not know that, but, man, I did security for about 10 years out here in L.A. And, yeah. it, you know, it, I think it shaped my character a lot, too, just being around people and learning how to speak to people and handle tough situations and stuff. But, man, that's tripped out mm-hmm. big time. Wow, that's amazing. So, I mean, currently right now, through all your networking, through all your experiences, and like I said, we'll we'll dig into your relationship with uh with Chris Johnson and and, and what he brings. Um, you are currently now the uh, director of basketball operations at Cal Poly, uh, San Luis Obispo. So so how how is that experience for you so far? Man, so my my job, man, I love it, man. I get to be around these young kids and help them and groom them from you know boys to men you know that's right my 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 boss uh john smith who was a legend in riverside he's a legend he uh used to coach at riverside community college for over 10 years and it's a funny funny story he recruited uh my teammate to come play for him Mm -hmm. and he also wanted to take me as well to come play for him i didn't go play for him i didn't (laughs) and you know most most coaches who you don't go and play for they don't want nothing to do with you they right. ain't trying to. They ain't trying to mess with you ever again. Uh-huh. When I went out to Minnesota and I came back every summer, he invited me to his practices, his runs. He allowed me to work out with his team. It was almost like I was an ex- I was on his team, even though I wasn't. He right. had no ill feelings. He he still took me in as one of his own kids. Man, and you know that solid. speaks volume as a, as an African American man to to take somebody in regardless of whether they're their kid or not. And ever since then, we've just had a, we've had a tight knit you know relationship when i got my head coaching job he was the first one to congratulate me he gave me some nuggets and some jewels to help me become a successful head coach mm-hmm. and you know when he got the job here at cal poly he called me the next day hey i want you on my staff would you be interested i said i ain't gonna make the same mistake twice that's <laughs> I ain't right i'm tell you i ain't gonna tell you no twice and so, <laughs> and so, and so here we are today um, but yeah I, I love my job man it, i help I work with these kids, but I also do a lot of the behind the scenes. People don't understand what it takes. You know, they just see the basketball dribbling going through a hoop, but it, it's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that we take care of with academics, yes. flights, yes. travel, you know, feeding these young men, making sure they're taken care of on and off the court. So that's a lot of things that I do to help these guys. And preparation, man, preparation mm-hmm. is key, man. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be prepared. Absolutely, man. That's a mm-hmm. that's amazing, man. So. I mean, through all that experience, man, of course, we're all in this tough time and we, you know, now going through the pandemic, the COVID-19 has put a halt to sports. Uh, yeah. I know and I appreciate, uh, you know, you invited me and my wife out to a game early this year uh, versus yeah. Long Beach, man. It was actually a really good game, too. But um, were you guys able to finish the season? What what ended up happening with you guys? So it's funny. After Long Beach, we played UC Santa Barbara. And right after that game, 
you get about a week off until you go to the Big West tournament. Well, we didn't beat Santa Barbara, so we weren't going to the tournament regardless. Mm -hmm. But literally a week after the game, teams are getting ready to travel down to Anaheim. They go play at the Honda Center. And that's when they shut down. Hey, we're not playing because COVID. And so it was just a trickle down effect. So we were able to finish our very last game of the season. Yeah. Right after that, they shut everything down. It was it was complete halt. Man, how was how was their reaction? What was what was what was their deal as far as that? I know even though you guys were done, I mean that meant no more practices, no more team get togethers or anything like that, correct? Yeah, so for us we had it was almost like a I don't want to say we went to scramble mode, but we kind of did. It was like, okay, guys, pack up your stuff, all your belongings, and then now you guys got to head home. Man, sent everybody you know? home, huh? Damn. And so you did, they had to finish their classes online. Like, the school is even scrambling. Okay, how are we going to go ahead and adjust from being an in-class or in-person school to now everything virtual? Like, we have to learn on the fly. Yeah. And we have to adjust on the fly. So it was it was tough at first. But then, obviously, as, as the months went on, just, we've adjusted, but we're ready to get back. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So I don't know if everything's clear for you guys to, I mean, I'm sure practices can start a little bit as far as maybe small groups. But, I mean, in the end, with how the NBA, of course, now tonight, the NBA has started up. So, you know, now I think the whole world is just going to look at how they lead in this situation to see how we can react you know, as as a public and, and schools and I think just gonna be a trickle effect from from you know, from what the NBA does. Yeah, yeah. For for, for us, um, we're allowed to do well, I'm blessed. Where we live is in central California where right. the cases aren't as drastic as LA right. or, you know, in the Bay Area. So we're allowed to have our kids four days a week. They come in, they get a temperature check every day. And they get a wristband put on them. That wristband lets everybody at the school know they've been cleared for all activities. So we'll right. literally be on the floor with our kids for an hour. Mm -hmm. And we divide them up amongst our eight baskets. So it's two kids per basket. And the coach is overseeing that basket, just telling them what drills they're going to do because we really can't be hands-on, right. you know, still with the whole COVID. And so they do an hour with us. They do an hour in the weight room, which is outside with stations, mm. whether it's on the sand courts or whether we're doing something else. And then after that, they're done for the day. So we, we get a small leg up on everybody in our conference. All right. As far as being together. That's good, man. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. Mm -hmm. So I want to transition a little bit and, and, and kind yeah. of go back before you, you end up, you know, taking this job at Cal Poly and you were a part of, man, probably one of the, the, the best and popular uh, trainers that's out right now uh chris johnson is a monster being in that you know on that court and and training these top all-stars and, and future hall of famers man so what was it like you know being under his tutelage and, and, and helping him man chris chris is one of the greatest mentors i would say because chris learned from phil handy phil handy as you know man is one of the greatest ogs in yep. the game and so i got to work with phil and chris at the same time for over two summers and you know phil once you're under that umbrella that that tree that family tree you you're never going to go wrong as long as you do what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. and and you and you just respect the game so working with chris man i had to work on the fly a lot of things you do with chris he'll tell you once maybe twice now go and do it yep. if you make a mistake on the way that's okay if you make a mistake but you cannot continue to make those same mistakes you got to learn grow continue to learn and then you have to gain the trust from his clients you yes. know a lot of these clients they see you you know you know a lot of these people who want to be working with chris they just want to be in the limelight they just want pictures yeah, next yeah, to the yeah, players yeah the starstruck yeah but chris will pick up on that quick players will pick up on that quick and if a player goes to chris and says hey yo such and such is this this and that mm -hmm. you'll, he'll let you go as quick as he brought you in yeah, and so it's just a thing. It's just you gotta be organic. You gotta be. You gotta just be yourself. So and then let the rest fall for its own. I want to ask you this, man. I know you're a humble mm -hmm. dude, man. Just knowing you off the court, bro. And man, name some of them clients that you guys are around, man. Um, LeBron James, J.R. Smith, uh, Jimmy Butler, Tony Snell, James Ennis, Joakim Noah, Taj Gibson. Just Justin Holiday, Austin Rivers, Seth Curry, uh, Yogi Ferrell, Iman Shumpert. Uh, Man. 
Gosh. The list just that's, Tobias that's... Harris. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it keep going. Wow. Man, so being around those cats, yeah. it's totally different level and it's the top level. So when you when you when you're in your thing and you're in your element with them, how do you approach that? Like like what do you go in thinking? I I be myself, man. Like for for instance, if we're working on a Monday, Monday is usually touch up Mondays. So we have a package that we stay in. There's a package that you ne if you never leave the package, you're always gonna be fine. You may slip up and forget one of the drills, but if you stay within that package that we work on on that certain particular day, yeah, you're, that that player will gain more trust in you because when you're talking to him and you're teaching him, he's gonna trust you more that you know what you're talking about and you know what you're doing. So once that happens, your confidence goes higher and higher, knowing that, okay, this player's starting to really trust what I'm saying and teaching him. Mm -hmm. Now I can go ahead to the next level of the package and teach him even more to the point now where it's like, if Chris is busy working with somebody in another state, he can say, hey, yo, EP, I need you to go here and go work with such and such mm -hmm. and make sure you work on this package with him. Okay, cool. Because with, with Chris, we don't write down our workouts. I kid you not, every single workout that I've done with Chris, it's in my brain. Now, obviously, we have film that we can go back and look at our little Reference. clips. Yep. But every, everything is in the brain. We don't write nothing down. I mean, that's how it should be, man, because the game is all repetitive. It's, it's repetition. Mm -hmm. It's muscle memory. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in, in, in the professional way, as I, I heard you mention earlier about how he'll tell you once, he'll tell you twice. And then that's it. You got to get it. You got to grasp yeah. it. You know, your comprehension level has got to be through the roof. You know, even, you know, with the game, you know, with pro game. So yeah. it is yeah. what it is. You know, if you can't catch up, you're going to get left behind either way. So I love that. I love that that concept that he has. Um, so while we're on that, that level, mm -hmm. I want to ask you, which is basically our topic of discussion, is the question is, is it is it self-motivating to have a trainer? Because, of course, it's, you know, these professional basketball players, they have to have a trainer to keep them up to beat and, you know, maybe adding things to that game. But now you see kids as young as seven and eight and nine and, 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 and ages up, you know, having yeah. trainers, you know. But is that a self-motivating thing? What's your, what's your opinion on that? I think if you have a trainer, it has to be somebody who knows the game. And that's it's easy to say. Because, you know, you have these parents who will watch a video, watch a clip, or read somebody's Instagram and see a thousand photos and assuming that person knows the game. Yeah. But if, you, if, you, if you're a parent who is uneducated on finding the right trainer, you need to ask questions. You yeah. need to ask questions because if you don't, your kid might end up with somebody training, but they could be learning the wrong things. Or they could be overworking your child. So mm -hmm. I think having a trainer, is, it's, it's good. But you have to, you have to pretty much do an interview with that trainer to make sure that that person is giving your kid what you're looking for, and that kid is enjoying what he's doing. Right, exactly. I agree with that. Now, as far as the self motivating part, you know, I know in our day uh, we're around the same age, so it's you know we didn't have the Instagrams and you know the social mm -hmm. medias to reference, and so everything for us was in our imagination. So it's yeah. like, you know, if I want to get out there and I want to get better, well, I want to be like Scottie Pippen. I know I got to get in the gym and work. You know, I couldn't envision what Scottie was doing, but I had to do something to at least make me feel like I am, you know, getting to the level that I want to get to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do, what do you think? Do you think a lot of these kids even, you know, would they even go in the gym if they didn't have a trainer? Uh, Mike, think about this, bro. When we played – we was on the blacktop. Oh yeah. We was at the we was at the park, <laughs> and like when we got on the court with with the OGs, you weren't even get a shot. You had to just play defense. That's and if right. they did, if they gave you a shot, that's an that's a blessing that might get a second shot. Right. If you miss that first shot, don't expect to get the ball back again. So you know, with with us, we really have to grind just to prove it to the OGs that we're worthy of being on their court. So yeah. when it came to us working out, we always went hard because we knew, like, okay, I got to prove it to them yeah. just so I can play with them. With yeah. these kids, a lot of them are content with just being on, on the team. Okay, I made the team cool. I get the gear perfect. <laughs> they don't know. Some of them don't know how to, you know, push themselves beyond their limits because when tough things get hard, they stop. 
Yeah. They, they don't know where to find that extra gear to really push. So having that trainer who knows what they're doing will help push that kid just a little bit to get him over the edge. So when he does get to that game and it's overtime, whatever, there's no excuse. You're ready because you've already been there. Exactly. So I think you're absolutely right when it comes to that as far as the motivation from the right trainer, the right person. Mm -hmm. And yes, absolutely. Parents, you hear that you have to do your research you know it's not a bad thing even though there's some guys you know that, that that are you know more students of the game i mean just because mm -hmm. you played the game for a very long time doesn't mean you know how to teach and i think that's the biggest key to it is is really learning how to teach if you learn how to teach and know how to reach someone then i think you'll be the best in whatever it is that you want to do you know absolutely. But yeah absolutely I, I agree with that because i train kids all the time i train pro athletes all the time and of course it's it's, it's a bigger diff different level but still at the same time it is about how you approach it and everybody's different everyone plays a different position you know so mm -hmm. i can reference for myself i remember back in the day i would come home and i'm a forward man i'm a three four sometimes i can play the four five depending on the situation but when I got home, I was always looking for a guard to work out with. You know, if I couldn't get a trainer, yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to keep, you know, try to keep this little dude in front of me, you know, the whole summer. And I think that's what helped me personally. But again, our guys working out together, that's the next thing I wanted to ask you because, you know, with this culture now in the NBA and, and just how we are, you know, and I think you got to give kudos to LeBron because I don't think it's a bad thing at all that now players are starting to work out together and, and, and you know, develop – friendships to an extent you know mm -hmm. but still keep it competitive so what, what, what do you think on that i want you to take on you know the pro athletes now hooking up and, and working I, out i think back then like early 2000s you know even the 90s it was frowned upon for you to work out with your rival because yeah. you're, you're trying to get better so you can beat him in the playoffs or beat him in the finals i think now doing that it there's some benefits to it because like you said lebron if lebron's in the gym working out with jr that's building camaraderie. Regardless mm -hmm. if they play together in another uh, for another team, if you can get your teammates in the gym with you working, that's going to take their skill set and their com their competitiveness to another level. And that's what you want. You want right. to build each other. You don't want to tear each other apart. I mean, that's just like with, you know, that's another topic as far as our own people. But to stay on basketball, you, you want to build each other up. But at the end of the day, we're all trying to be on the same level and eat at the same plate, at the same table. Absolutely. I mean, I think what, what got me going, uh, the first video that I remember seeing, well, I was like, damn, okay. It was KD and Joe Johnson working out together. Mm. And I, I couldn't believe it, but I was just like, damn, you know, that's the same type of player as far as the score, you know, just deadly, aggressive. And these two dudes are kind of sharing Jews and going at each other. And I think that's dope because, of course, with the game of basketball being so competitive, when you are training with your man, you're trying to show him up. I ain't trying to miss no shots. You know, I ain't trying yeah. to make as, as, as you know, least, as, least amount of mistakes as possible. You know, just to let the guy know next to me, hey, we working together, but I'm at you. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think that is so dope, you know, to kind of see big names at that. You know, that's, yeah. that's putting their egos and, and all the fame and everything to the side to just go back to square one and get it done. Yeah, you I know? agree. Absolutely. So shout out to Chris Johnson. I think he's doing an amazing job. Uh, the first time I seen him ever or even knew who he was, I could be late, but I think it was with Jimmy Butler. And I'm a huge <laughs> Jimmy Butler fan. I'm a Chicago <laughs> guy at heart. And I just know how hard Jimmy Butler works. Marquette dude just it's just amazing and, and i know that i've seen you know the jump in jimmy's game offensively you know to becoming who he is today you know so if that's chris johnson's work man shout out to him for sure yeah those were those are some 5 30 a.m workouts i bet five days a week man. those those are those are good jimmy a bull man <laughs> he a yeah. bull so i yeah. you know i get it um so again season's over let's say the season is over you know whether you eliminated from the playoffs whatever it may be how much time do you think these guys take off now before you answer that i'll mm -hmm. go to myself now what i would do this was my routine i would get home i already knew what team i was playing for for the summer i would take a little small vacation with my wife and i'll probably take maybe 10 days off roughly two weeks max if that and 
what I mean by that is not playing games because we're going to play games every weekend, but just the training, just resting your body from the season. How long do you think players should take off as far as your experience with these NBA guys? So um, every, every player is different. So your OGs, like let's say Taj Gibson, just play 82 games, maybe even a first-round exit in the playoffs. Right. A guy like that is going to probably take about a month off, maybe a month and a half. Yeah. Because you you just played over almost what 100 games. 100 games. So you, so your your body at that, especially at that age, you need the break. You need it. Now you may not be hooping, but you might be doing some type of yoga, Pilates, you know, some type of strength training. But after a month and a half, and he comes out to LA. He's he's grinding. He he's about to give you five days a week of hoops, weights, and he'll go hard. He's he's not gonna take a day off. And so it's different for a guy like that to let's say a guy like you who played overseas and let's say Canada or Europe. Mm-hmm. You know, you get back home, you might like you said take ten days off. But I mean, if you know your season's not gonna start back up again until the fall, right. what's wrong with taking what's wrong with taking a month off? Right. But we feel like, and even as when I was a young player, we feel like that's too much time. You know, and I try to tell the guys that, that, that I work with a lot about, you know, you don't have to overkill yourself in the gym. You got to work smart, you know, and these kids will work till their knees fall off, you know, and because they feel like, you know, there's something on their back saying, I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. Well, if you feel like you're not doing enough, then you need to check at what you're doing in the gym, you know, to, yeah. to make yourself feel like that, you know. Yeah. So that's that's tripped out. It's really it's really trippy. But. Again, whatever floats your boat, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so what I want to do now, I want to ask you, um, what advice do you give now to these kids? You know, what, what what would you give to the youth as far as, you know, life in general? Because we all stopped basketball. I stopped at 31 years old, and I got so much life now. And, you know, what can you give these kids to, you know, just to – What's your what's your perspective on that? Um, it's a lot. So I, I think for this generation, if you have an OG, somebody who's in your ear, and you always like, man, I'm tired of this dude. Always, you need to really listen to that OG. If someone truly cares about you and they're trying to give you advice on life, not just on the court but off the court, you need to hold that person very valuable to you, because not a lot of kids have that in their lives where they have somebody who cares about them, and also. You have to have a plan B. I don't want to ever knock a kid's dream of going to the NBA, playing professional. You don't ever want to knock that. No. But when that ball stops bouncing, you have to have some type of plan B, whether you want to be an entrepreneur, whether you want to get into, you know, movies, music, whatever it may be. Educate yourself on that in your off season. We just talked about taking a month off. And that month off, you could be doing something. You could be learning on your on your craft that you want to do when the game is over. Exactly. I mean, you see you see some NBA guys like Vince Carter. In his offseason, what he do? He went back to North Carolina to get his degree. Yeah. Like guys can understand, even during this COVID, you should be picking up some type of skill. It mm-hmm. ain't gotta be it ain't gotta be basketball and it could be anything. Right. But you have to you but you have to learn something, whether it's a plan B of any type, just so when that ball does stop bouncing at whatever time it is, you're not sitting here stuck or wondering when your next meal's coming or if the, you can keep the roof over your head or not. Like you gotta always be ready. Stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready, man. Read a book. Y'all wanna know what to do? Get in here and read some books, man. You know, figure out what you love, what interests you, and then go research that and start reading up on that. But you're right, man, absolutely, man. So what is in the future for Coach Eric Perry? Where he's at right now, where he wants to be, and 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 in the future. Where I am right right now, I I want Cal Poly to be on top in the Big West. You know, a lot of people they don't look at us as a basketball school, or they don't see us as winners. That's okay. We're coming. You That's know what right. I'm saying? We, we we like to be the underdogs. We like for people to look past us. Because all we're going to do is work. We're working over here. Yeah, Our guys are working hard. tirelessly. Our staff is working. Like, yep. we are, we're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, like I, I seen at the game we went to with Long Beach was a hell of a game. Yeah. We took it to overtime, came up short, but it was an amazing game. Amazing game. Yeah. Them dudes, they gave it all that they had. They left it out there. And I know that's 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 straight coming from you guys and, and their coaching staff. So, 
man, continue to push, continue to put them at the top, man. I'm always support you, brother. Appreciate you. You man. know, my phone's always open, man. I would love to continue, you know, our relationship as far as, you know, sharing some game and, you know, and just getting it done. Just getting it done mm -hmm. for the youth, man. Absolutely. I always help you out, man, whatever you need. And I appreciate that, brother, man. Thank you so much. This has been a great, great, informative episode with Coach Eric Perry, Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo. Wow, great story. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, we really appreciate uh, Eric coming on, and we appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, once again, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share, leave us some feedback, uh, leave us some questions, um, topics you want us to discuss. Yes. We're all open to it. Uh, thank you guys again for tuning in. Absolutely. And we appreciate the support. Continue to pass the word on and uh, subscribe. Yes. And follow us on Instagram at great underscore. I'm sure it's going to pop up, but make sure you follow us on Instagram. There you go. All right. Peace. Right. Peace and love. This podcast series is part of the Great Gain Athletics, Inc. organization and is brought to you in part by the creative producers at the Soul True Group. There's an art to connecting souls. Digital media, content creation for the arts and souls.